Hello everybody, it is me Pacific, and I'm taking a momentary break from doing a controversial video, and thought I'd do one about American toys. Okay, I'm 46 years old, so I'm going to start dating myself here, guys and gals. How many of you remember classic American toys? Now, I'm going to start with boys first. Tonka trucks, man. Tonka trucks, all steel construction. You could squeeze your butt cheeks in a mighty yellow Tonka dump truck and go flying down the driveway. You know what? Tonka made some cool trucks. And you know, some of those yellow ones, if they're still in mint condition, are worth a ton of money. Sadly, Tonka was bought out by Hasbro, I believe in the 80s or the 90s, and now it's all plastic junk. Have you guys ever looked in a toy aisle today? You hardly see any trucks, and if you do, it's all plastic stuff that ends up in the trash can in six months. Shoot, man. And then Tonka came out with pound puppies. I'm like, come on. Pound puppies? Tonka was the number one steel construction truck over any of them. They had Buddy L, Nylant, Instructo, and a few others. But Tonka was head and shoulders above the rest. They were based out of Minnetonka, Lake Minnetonka, Minnesota. That's how they got their name. And the people that worked for that factory actually enjoyed working for Tonka. They'd have snowstorms so bad that nobody would go home, so they'd just stay there and make toy trucks. I'm like, that's cool. And then, of course, there were Barbies for girls. Now they got those stupid Bratz dolls and all this just attitude toys. But go down a toy aisle today, and I'll tell you what, it's not the same. Kids are obsessed with the whole <clears throat> cyber world and techno stuff and Xbox. And you just don't see kids playing with trucks anymore. Or girls playing with dolls. Shoot. Today you got... Uh, never mind. I'm not going to go there. <sighs> girls aren't playing with dolls anymore and boys aren't playing with trucks. Now they're doing stuff that we used to say was adults only. My gosh. Remember Slinky? Sheesh, man. I never did get that thing to go down the stairs the way it showed on the TV. And then the safest toy of all, and I'm surprised OSHA didn't come in and condemn, or the National Toy Safety Association, whatever. Slip and slide, man. Can you imagine doing that as an adult? Holy cow. Slip and slide. And then there was Twister. And then, remember, sit and spin? Sat there and got that thing going. And then Big Wheels, man. How many boys remember the sound of those plastic tires blazing down sidewalks? <clears throat> I told somebody <clears throat> I wanted to ride a bike across America or walk across America, but that's already been done. I said, so what can Pacific do that nobody's done? And I told people back in the 90s, my place of employment on break, I said, I want to ride a big wheel across America from California to New York, right down Manhattan. Somebody says, dude, do you know how many plastic tires you'd go through? <laughs> I said, man, can you imagine going up I-70 over the Colorado Rockies and slipping, 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 slipping. <laughs> but the seat doesn't go back far enough, man. I think it had three or two adjustments, and that's it. They need to make an adult big wheel. Gosh, what else did they have? And then games like Ants in the Pants, and Mr. Potato Head, and Don't Break the Ice. And then, uh, oh my gosh. Does anybody remember reading Archie comics? And in the back, they had all those little gag gifts, but somewhere in there, they had a full page devoted with a picture that made all of us kids go, wow, that's really cool. Sea monkeys. You buy the kit if you were dumb enough to believe the picture. You're like, they don't have crowns. And they're little brine shrimp that wriggle through the water. No underwater village. No little things with crowns on their head. Man, we kids got ripped off. Or those gadget buzzers you stick in your hand, shake somebody's hand, and it goes, bzz, with a snappy bubble gum, you pull the stick. Want a piece of gum? Psh, ow! Shoot, or the candy that was so hot it set your mouth on fire, and all those little gag gifts and whoopee cushions, and remote control UFOs that went about six inches off the ground and crashed. <laughs> Man, we were suckers back then. I still have a thing of sea monkeys unopened. It was given to me by my cousin as an inside joke. Because we both believe sea monkeys really looked like that. 
I didn't go out and buy them, but somebody else bought them so that I could see that <sighs> false advertising. Remember Cootie? Sheesh. What else do we have? Hot Wheels Matchbox. Matchbox used to make all metal replica trucks. Then they got into more plastic. Hot Wheels had die cast chassis and die cast bodies, and then they moved more to the plastic. It's like the toys, everything has gone down in quality. And then Hot Wheels got so popular that now they're just mass manufacturing stuff. Used to be went out and found the treasure hunts and this and that, and Johnny Lightnings, and now they're three and four bucks a piece. And it's like, who can afford to do that? At one time, I had over 220 Tonka trucks and over a thousand Hot Wheels, die cast, Johnny Lightning, Matchbox, Tushy Toy. And another one, Tomika. When I was in Hong Kong, Japan is still making Tomika, die cast trucks and cars. Those are tight. If you want to get into the collector's market, that's the way to go. Excuse me. I'm telling you, man, this dry weather is killing me. But toys, oh my gosh, do we have tool, cool toys. G.I. Joe, Daisy BB guns, and all that. And we used to have those little green plastic army men. Shoot, those were fun. We'd dig holes, build a lake, run the garden hose, put a little river with a bunch of stick villages and stuff, put all the army men all over there, and then I'd bust the dam of the little pond that I backed up, you know, run the hose all day and flood the backyard break the dam and all these army, plastic army men, little stick huts go washing down out in the street. People driving by is like, wow, what a disaster. <laughs> Tonka trucks, man. Shoot. I remember I was a kid. Some kids came through the neighborhood. I was washing my Tonka off. They came by once and they said, you wash that real good now. They come back and I was just a little piddly munchkin. They come back and put a firecracker up under the, by the cab under the dump overhang, that thing went <laughs> lit it, the dump flips back and I'm crying, running the house ah, there's a big scorch mark you couldn't destroy those things though shoot, we used to squirt them with the hose drag them behind our bicycles and push them off a cliff and they were still pretty pretty solid shoot man, these plastic toys are a dime a dozen at the yard sales and then you go to garage sales today and some mother selling a box of old you know, goobered on and boogered up Happy Meal toys that aren't worth anything and she's still trying to get a dollar a piece for them and you're like, are you serious? Shoot, man, we had the toys when I was a kid. BMX bikes. You Any of you guys ride BMX bikes, remember when you used to endo it? You'd land straight on the front wheel and down you went, road rash, and you got up laughing. That was cool. Yeah, toys have changed, man. Remember the hula hoop? Remember the magic window? The sand and you tilted around? You know, believe it or not, those things were just like really good for vegging out on. And then etch a sketch. I tried to draw little skyscrapers and stuff. And uh, shoot, light bright. Now that was a bright idea. Put all these little colored plagues that match the corresponding number to make a picture. Anybody have a Snoopy snow cone machine? I didn't. Shoot, I still remember the song. The Snoopy Snow Cone Machine. And then they had Betty Crocker Easy Bake Oven. Oh, man. But you know what? I was totally into trucks when I was a kid. I had to have every Tonka, the mighty Tonka scraper. Shoot, that thing was almost three feet long, man. Solid steel toy. And the tractors, the front end loaders, and snow plows and everything else. Shoot. I'm trying to think of all the other stuff. Silly putty. And then in the 80s, it came out with that little green garbage can of that green nasty stuff. It looks like it ran out of your nose called slime. Shoot, they said it wasn't supposed to stick to anything. My sister smeared it all over the paneling in my parents' bedroom, and it never came off. Big blob of <laughs> stuck to the wall. Shoot, and then all the Hello Kitty toys. Cabbage patch. That's when our society started going downhill. Remember mothers standing in line to get their limited edition cabbage patch and people were getting punched and pushed and a woman would cut somebody off and grab the last one off the shelf and suddenly adults became worse than children. We were taught, wait your turn in line, share, and then you see adult woman going bestial in a store over a cabbage patch doll. 
I told my son, I said, Cabbage Patch looks like something somebody punched in the face. And it had a birth certificate. <laughs> really? Today's toys aren't so cool. I, every so often, go down the toy aisle just to see the latest stuff. 99% crap. It's all plastic. I don't know, man. I'm still old-fashioned. I still like trucks for boys, dollies for girls. It's like, what happened? Now, I was kind of a bratty little kid. I had one of those Tonka Winnebago motorhomes. Remember those? Those were almost three feet long, and the roof opened up, and you could put all the... They used to have a whole Tonka ensemble and picnic tables and crap that came with it. Shoot, we threw all that stuff out. I took my sister's Barbies, jammed them all in there, shut the lid, sat on the thing, rode it down the driveway, and crashed into the end of the street. Barbie, want to go for a ride? <laughs> Blonde hair, dollies all over the ground. <laughs> Shoot, we were bad. My sister gets so mad at me. She got even with me, though. <clears throat> I take the heads off her Barbie doll. She came into my room one day and took crayons and went, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, on every four walls. I come home from school. I'm busted. I'm like, what did I do? You need to clean. I didn't do that. Oh, yeah, you did. She even colored on my trucks, crayon, all over the semi-trailers. I'm like, that's it. You colored on my trucks. This is war. So when she got in junior high, she had a droopy dog. Stuffed droopy. We moved to Arizona. We had a short wave antenna tower out in the yard. It was at least 100 feet tall. I wasn't afraid of heights, but I climbed up as far as I could, and somebody had mounted a TV antenna, one of those old, you know, one of these things that sticks out at the top. Some ham, ham radio operator used to live there, had the antenna installed. It was at the top of Rocky Hill on our property, and I climbed up that thing as high as I could go, and I tied Droopy's neck around the string, and I just <laughs> threw it up there. Thank <laughs> God, God. And it was hanging in the breeze, man. <laughs> it stayed up there for the longest time before it rotted and came down because of the sun of Arizona and the elements. One day, we had a 4th of July festivity down on the front patio, barbecue, watermelon, you know, typical 4th fest. <laughs> and the sun's starting to set, and the pines are all around, and you look up and you see the silhouette of this tower. Then you see the silhouette of Droopy hanging by a string, flopping in the breeze. My mother says, what is that? And the other lady relatives and grandmas and aunts and cousins, what is that hanging off of there? My sister gives it away. That's my Droopy. <laughs> Uh-oh, I busted and I start going. Mm -hmm. Pacific? Did you put that up there? I just looked and I said, now how would I do that? You see how tall that is? They knew. They knew. My dad ordered me to go up there and get it. I said, Dad, you see that little indent where the tower gets smaller? I said, that's where I stopped. That thing starts to go like this. I'm not going to the top. He ordered me to go. And I said, I'm not going up there. And I didn't. And one day... Windstorm finally blew the remains of Droopy. Remember that? Hello. I am so happy. I loved Droopy. Droopy, Peppy Le Pew, that's another thing. Cartoons, man. Cartoons, they suck. SpongeBob? Oh my gosh, is that stupid? It's dumb. And then they had the shows like Teletubbies. Clifford was good. But when I was a kid, Shoot, anybody remember Bozo the Clown, Mr. Rogers, The Electric Company, Sesame Street, Super Friends. Anybody remember Super Friends? Shoot, man, Aquaman, Wonder Twin Powers, activate, <laughs> and they turn into a chunk of ice. Batman, Marvel Comics, oh yeah. And you know what? We had games from Chinese checkers, the backgammon to everything. Those were the days, man. Skip, Bo, and Uno are pretty cool. Never did Pictionary, but that's supposed to be good. But the toys when I was a kid rocked. You could buy, back when I was a kid, an all-steel Tonka metal truck for like seven bucks. And they thought that was expensive back then. Today, if you can even find one, some of those Mighty Tonkas, the Mighty Tonkas were those yellow ones. They had the front-end loader, the dump truck, the scraper, the road graders, all those with 
big plastic tires. Those things, you would be shocked. Some of them can go upwards of a thousand dollars a piece if they're in the original box. Box? Who did that? Then you find out in the Midwest that kids were taught to put it back in the box and wipe it all off. Shoot, out west? First thing we did was destroy the wrapping paper and then the box, and it wasn't long afterwards that that truck looked like it had been running around in an iron pit mine. Scratches and rust all over it. Tell me about your favorite toys. Show up in the comments. Let me know what your favorite toy was. Let's have fun with this. American toys were the greatest, man. But now it's like something's happening. But you know what? Even with all those new toys, on the holidays, the kids would play with the stupid box. They'd draw windows, cut them out, bend the cardboard back, and go in there and play house. What? You're not playing with the Tonka toys and new dolls? Shoot. Kids would play with a box. We'd roll an old truck tire down the street. We had so much fun. I gotta tell you a story. I took the front tire off my bicycle because the bicycle's no good anymore. Pumped that tire as firm as I could get it. And I'm standing with my group of friends in Mammoth Lakes, California on a steep hill. I let that tire go. Goes rolling down. Goes down to the next cross street. Here comes one of those big giant forklifts. The big construction ones. And it's not like the factory ones. It's a big one. It's got the big three foot high tires. So it had this ground clearance. <laughs> this thing comes. It's a local construction company. This thing comes. The tire goes boom. <laughs> right in between the front back wheels. Forklift drivers going, what the heck? <laughs> the tire just sails down the street. And we're all laughing. <laughs> he can't get us because the thing can't go very fast. And we're just, man, was that ever fun. Shoot. We used to have all kinds of fun. And then you load up a Tonka with a bunch of rocks and sail it down the street and see how far it'll go before it goes. <laughs> <laughs> I really wish I didn't destroy my toys like I did because I'd be pretty rich right now. A lot of those toys are worth money. Remember the Fisher Price, the little picnic and camping set, the little school buses and all that stuff? Weebles wobble, but they don't fall down. Play Doh, man. Play Doh rocks. My cousin and I, being the intelligent, mature beings that we were, we took some bound Play Doh and we made it into dog mess and hung it on a wire and hung it in the window. Beautiful, huh? Shoot. We used to do all kinds of. Anybody remember a machine? We used to call it a goat machine. They were little die cast molds. I think it was some sort of pot metal or aluminum. And you heat it up, these different colored rubbery plastic solutions. Heat it up, put it in the molds, and you had cockroaches and bugs and beetles and little flies and things. Shoot, that was cool, man. That was a big deal for us. Can we do the goops? Oh, there's so many toys out there, I forgot what all of them were. But, uh, they were fun. They were absolutely fun. And I look today at what kids are growing up on. They truly are missing out. Maybe that's what the problem is with today's teens and all that. They didn't get to play with the cool toys. They didn't grow up on the cool cartoons like Wiley e. Coyote and Acme and Friends. Shoot, man, Wiley e. Coyote blows up some. He's walking around with singed face. Or somebody gets hit and Sylvester the Cat's going like an accordion. You know, people said those promoted violence. Never once did I watch those cartoons and get the impetus to pick up a gun and shoot people. I knew that if you fall off the Grand Canyon, you're going to get hurt. Those cartoons were funny. Because there was no blood, there was no guts, and they continued to live. I don't believe that taught any kids to be violent. I just don't. Bugs Bunny and all that. Daffy Duck. Those cartoons rocked. Anybody remember? Hey, 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 boo -boo. Let's help ourselves to a picnic basket, boo -boo. Gee, Yogi, I don't think Mr. Ranger's going to like that very much. Then we went to <laughs> Pee Wee Herman. Uh, he was a little weird. And then there's, hi, everybody. My name is Barney. <laughs> Let's all learn to get along. Barney was too contrived. Even my little kids on my bus said, Barney's lame. No, it's not the same, man. Shoot, anybody remember uh, Marianne, Miss Marianne with Romper Room? Dusty's Treehouse, Captain Kangaroo. <clears throat> we thought that was living back then. But Slip and Slide takes the all-time awards for safest toy around. Go run as fast as you can and go BAM! Right on your back. You know what? That was a cool toy. Oh yeah. We had a lot of fun when we were growing up. 
I think that's what's wrong with kids today. Now they got to wear bicycle helmets. Shoot, bicycle helmets? If I'd have put on a bicycle helmet when I was a kid, I would have been laughed at by everybody on their BMX mites. By helmet? Shoot, I had a huffy bike with a shock absorber down the middle, and all my friends laughed at me until they were alone. Then they said, can I ride your bike? That shock's kind of cool. <laughs> they laughed at my huffy bike. But they all thought it was funny secretly. Shoot. That was a trendsetter. How many kids running around their neighborhood riding a huffy bicycle with that big shock in the middle that actually worked? You know what? That was cool. Why didn't BMX come out with that idea? I think they did later. And then, when, you know what's funny? I was always ahead of my time. I always thought the Titanic was cool and there was just a small group of people that were into it. And then when they found it, it was big deal. And then they laughed at the Huffy shock absorber bike. And then later on, they came out with shocks and the forks and all that. And everybody's like, that's a good idea. <laughs> yeah, it came out like 30 years before that, but everybody thought it was stupid. Shoot, man. I was just ahead of my time. And they thought I was a dork back then. Huffy bike with a shock absorber. Sheesh, man. It was also one of the first ones to go around our neighborhood on one of those old 50s bikes. And everybody laughed at me for that, too. And then they come out with the beach cruiser. It looks just like that. Imagine that. Everybody thought, oh, I've got to have a beach cruiser, man. <laughs> now they sell retro bikes for big money. I was ahead of my time, folks. I'm telling you. And I am now, too, because I'm talking about controversy. And a lot of people do. I'm not saying I'm the only one. But it's not in vogue today to be controversial, especially in America with political correctness. Shoot. They've even censored some Warner Brothers cartoons because they're not politically correct. Really? Shoot. There was so much humor in those cartoons that only adults today could get. The kids sit there and it just goes, Poom. That's Some of that stuff was absolutely funny. Sylvester and Tweety are flying around the living room. Stuff's flying in all directions. A little old lady sitting there on her chair. She pulls off her spectacle and she goes, <laughs> Stigmatism. Shoot. What kid got that? We adults are going, Poom. That's funny. G.I. <laughs> Joe, great American hero. What happened? We got some cool toys, man. Let me know what you think. This is Pacific signing off. And by the way, it's okay to be young at heart and play with some toys. Just make sure they're good ones. Have fun. Bye bye.